Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. In this lesson, let's take a look at some common editing mistakes that we should avoid to ensure our images are stylish, yet they appear natural and they don't look over-processed. So let's jump into it. Let's take a look at some common editing mistakes that we should be avoiding. So inside of PhotoRaw here, the first common editing mistake that we should avoid is over-processing with filters and effects. Now this doesn't really apply with images where you're trying to be more artistic or you're trying to really get a surreal style, by all means, go for it when it comes to those types of images. But when we're trying to create a more natural appearance, especially with wildlife portraits or a human portraits, anything like that where there's you know more of a natural environment, I would recommend not over-processing with the effects tab and your filters and go for a more natural look or use these techniques to tame things down a bit and just ensure that the natural beauty is still there if, if that's what you're going for. Um, but like I said earlier, if you're trying to go for a more surreal, artistic type edit, go for it. Please do. Photo Raw is the best for those types of edits. But if you're looking for more of a natural look, especially with portraits or wildlife type images, this is a few, these are a few easy ways that you can achieve that look. So let's go into the develop tab for this image. I haven't edited it at all. So let me just show you the preview. This is the original image. And before we go into the effects tab, I'm just gonna use a camera profile real quick. I'm gonna use this on one portrait option. If I turn off the preview, you can see it's just pulling up some of those midtones, brightening things up a bit. And we're not gonna do anything more in the develop tab. Let's go into the effects tab and let me show you a few techniques to taming the filters on your image if you've gone a little too strong with a preset or you're just looking to place that effector style into one particular area of your scene. So let's go into the add filter option and let's just use a strong filter, the LUTs filter. There's a lot of sort of mellow filters inside of the add filters option in this filters dialog. But the LUTs filter especially is quite strong in some of its styles. And so we're just gonna use this as an example. So let's say we've added on our LUTs filter and we've used a preset style here and we're thinking, wow, okay, it it's, looks pretty good, but it's just looking a little too intense for the image. Well, there's a couple things that you can do to tame it down and modify it to fit the scene. One thing I'd recommend doing, and it's a really basic thing, but oftentimes we forget to, to use it, and that, that is the opacity slider here. The opacity slider is going to modify the strength of that LUTs filter so that you can bring it down a little bit, add in just a little sort of uh, touch of it into the scene while not modifying the entirety of the photograph with it a really intense style. The next option to sort of tame a really intense style is to mask it into specific areas. Now with wildlife or portraits, it's really easy to do because we can just go into the masking options here. We'll go to this mask AI menu and I'll just choose the animal option. If you were photographing a person, you could have that option there as well, just enable that. And by default, it's set to paint out. So we'll just choose apply there. And now it's painted that away from the subject. Now in these cases, when you're modifying a mask like this, and we're gonna talk later on about this with another tip for avoiding editing mistakes, but I just wanna showcase this real quick. In these instances where you've masked away from a specific scene or a region, I'd recommend checking out this feathering slider to soften things up on those edges that way you can blend in that effect into the different regions a little bit more naturally. So let me show you in the mask view. It just softens it and blurs that mask edge a little bit to ensure that you have a nice soft edge within your masked region there. So now if we turn this off and on here, now we just have the LUT applied to the background region and we're not applying it to that actual subject that we're photographing.
You could also do the same thing by just painting it away from the region that you want to remove it from. Let's just hit B on the keyboard to grab our masking brush. I'll make sure my mode is set to paint out. That way we're removing this LUTs filter from our frog here. I'm gonna use a feathering of 100 to make sure I have a nice soft brush edge, opacity of 100, and my flow at 100. And let's just paint this away from our little frog there. And Shift and X will modify the mode from paint out to paint in. So you can fix regions if you've gone over the lines a little bit. So now if we turn this off and on, same thing. We have that nice style applied, but it's applied to the background. So it's only modifying that region. And we get this nice natural look on the portrait of our wildlife or our person or whatever we're photographing to ensure we still maintain that original beauty of our subject. Now you can do the same thing in the effects tab here with the entirety of all of the filters that you apply. So let's say we apply a couple of different filters here. We'll add a filter. We'll just add maybe sunshine. We'll just make it quite intense. Sunshine. Let's see, what else can we add? Vintage. Vintage is looking really crazy. We'll just go to a more mellow one there. Okay, there we go. So we have a few different filters here. And I'm going to leave the sunshine how it is, but let's pull back on this vintage opacity. Use that tip that we used earlier. And so we can see it's looking a little intense, a little too much. So let's go into just the top here of the effects tab near the opacity and the masking options. And let's pull back on the opacity there. to fine tune the opacity and strength of all of these filters combined. You could also mask away all of these different filters if you want to as well. Let's select the masking options for the effects tab. We have our mask view here. And we can do the same thing we did earlier. And we can just paint this away from the subject. You can also copy and paste masks into the actual effects tab itself. It doesn't actually have a mask AI menu here, but you can copy and paste the mask AI option if you are modifying it in the effects. So if I go into my LUTs here, I'll go into the masking options, I'll use this mask AI menu to choose that frog there and I'll paint it out. Let's just feather this a little bit and let's copy that mask. Let's go to the masking options for our effects tab and let's paste that mask. So now we have the same mask as we are using in our let's filter, but it's applied to the entirety of our effects tab so that that frog subject there is nice and natural throughout that modification of our style. And let me just pull back on the opacity here of the entirety of this. So you can see this is just the sort of before. And you can see the frog is staying nice and natural with no modifications to it. And we're just modifying that background there to ensure that we have a nice stylish sort of environment for him to be in. Another common editing mistake that we should avoid is ignoring the white balance within our scene. And I've done this uh, many a time, especially when building edits, because I jump right into the style and then things get a little too cool or they get a little too warm. And oftentimes this can, this can just be fixed right at the beginning um, of the edit. So 
with images like this where you know it's captured either really too cool and it has a lot of blue tones or it's captured too warm and it has too many orange red yellow tones whatever it may be let's head into the develop tab and let's use our temperature slider to correct it um, really really fast so let's go into the develop tab here let's go into our tone and color pane here and we're just going to go down to the color section now in this color section here, a really fast way to just correct the temperature is just correcting it by your eye, looking at the image and making sure it's the temperature that you want it to be. Now an easy way to do that is just by pulling back on the temperature slider to either side. You could pull it all the way to the right or pull it all the way to the left. I typically pull it all the way to the left because if you cool things down quite a bit, uh, it just makes it really, really sort of colorful in all of the, the wrong ways. And so what we can do now, I know it looks really crazy, but we're just going to stare at the image while we incrementally just drag our temperature slider back to the right and give it some warmth. You can see that by, you know, just pulling it back all the way, giving it that really cool temperature there and then pulling it back to the right, we sort of have an idea of what temperature we're looking for. And so I think that, you know, around there is, is looking nice. Maybe it's a little too, too warm there. I tend to go a little warm. So um, maybe this is a little too warm for you, but you can see that pulling that temperature slider all the way to that extreme and then pulling it to the right. we can easily bring back that natural look within the scene. Now, another way that you can correct temperature here, and let me just turn this back to its default. You can see it's quite cool. If we go to our color menu here, we can modify the white balance by just going through these different options. We can use auto, which will just automatically try to correct the white balance, which I think it doesn't do a great job here because I think it needs to be a little bit cooler. But then we can go through these and you can see that with shade looks a lot better there. I, at least in my opinion, looks a lot better within that particular scene, brings back a lot more of that warmth within that sunset there. And so this menu here is a really great option as well for choosing a white balance. You could also use this color dropper option. Now with the color dropper, you need to drop it on an area of gray within the scene. So let's choose this color dropper here. And there's quite a few areas of gray within these rocks here. So I'm just gonna grab that area there, drop it on there, and you can see it finds whatever that white balance should be within the scene. And you can see it's warmed it up quite a bit. So correcting white balance, really, really important, easy to avoid or easy to ignore, but something that uh, we should avoid not doing because it is a really great way to bring back that natural look within your scene and ensure things aren't too cool or too warm. Another common editing mistake that we should be avoiding is oversaturating. Oversaturating can lead to distorted colors and it can sort of take away from that original beauty of the image, especially if you're dealing with flowers or portraits or landscapes that have nice colors in them. You want them to stay a bit more natural. Now, again, if you're going for a more artistic or surreal look, um, by all means, go for it. Um, this is just for maintaining that sort of natural look within the scene. So. Inside of the develop tab, I've just scrolled down to my color section. We're back in the color section again. And what I would recommend doing is sort of similar to the temperature slider. Grab your saturation slider. And if you think you need more color within the scene, pull back your saturation slider and then incrementally pull it back up to the right, but stare at the image while you do it. And you'd be surprised at how much color is in that original photograph. I mean, we're at negative eight and there's a ton of color still in these flowers here. And then you can see by pulling it up even further, you can see we sort of take away from that original beauty of these flowers here. And we really give this background a lot of color there. Now, if this is the look that you're going for, then please, by all means, um, go for it. 
But just remember that we have the saturation slider here and it's easily modifiable and we can easily slide it back and forth to fine tune and really get that, that color saturation that we're going for. We could also selectively apply a color saturation adjustment into different areas within our scene using a local adjustment. So let's double click that saturation to take it back to its default. So we just have the original photo there. Let's now go into the local adjustments tab. Let's double click to rename this color saturation. I'll double click the exposure there to reset it to zero there. And let's head down to the color section. Let's increase the saturation. And then let's use our adjustment brush here to paint in that saturation into the flower there. This will avoid that background saturation and ensure that the viewer is really sort of honed in on these flowers there rather than being distracted by that really colorful background. Another common editing mistake to avoid is to avoid over detailing the entirety of your image and rather apply the detail into specific areas of your scene so that you can keep your subject in focus and you can retain that soft out of focus bokeh or blurriness that adds to portraits and wildlife and macro shots. So in the develop tab here, a lot of times we'll go into the tone and color pane. We'll modify our tone and color a bit. In this instance, I'm just going to use a camera profile just use portrait there and we'll head into our structure slider and we'll crank up on this to give our image detail. Now this is okay if you're looking to apply detail to the entirety of the image, but I would recommend applying detail selectively to ensure that you have some softness around your subject and you have your subject nice and sharp. So in the effects tab here, let's add a filter and let's add the dynamic contrast filter. Now I'm going to use surreal here just to really sort of crunch things up. And even then this instance, this is sort of a better showcase of how detail can be overdone is that if I turn this up and on here, those areas in this leaf here that are nice and soft before are now really sort of muddied up with detail and texture. This can be distracting, especially if we're really just trying to have the viewer focus in on the subject here. So let's use our masking options here. Let's invert that mask to conceal it from the entirety of the image. We'll hit B on the keyboard to grab our masking brush if it's not already selected. And let's use our paint in mode to paint this in to specific regions of the scene. And let's just paint this in to our butterfly there. And pro tip, when you're brushing, use the bracket keys on your keyboard, the left and right bracket keys, to modify your brush size. Just like that. We can just turn that off and on. And now we have a lot of detail within our subject. We can always copy this mask that we created within our detail. We can add a filter. Let's use a nice soft filter. Let's use the glow filter here, one of my favorites. Let's maybe choose that darker option, but let's paste that mask that we just copied. We'll invert it so that it's applied everywhere but that place that we applied detail. And if we turn this off and on, or rather pull back the opacity within our effects tab, you can see we keep things soft around our subject, yet our subject is nice and detailed. Another common editing mistake that we should be avoiding is ignoring the noise within our scene. Oftentimes when we're photographing wildlife or we're photographing sports, uh, we may be cranking up that ISO so that we can freeze the frame. And that leads to a bit of noise and some grain. Well, inside of Photo Raw, there's no noise AI and it 
works excellent at getting rid of that noise within your scene, yet still retaining all of that detail and quality. So with this image here, if we go into our info, around 3200 ISO. So we got a little bit of noise in here. And if we zoom in, especially behind our subject there, we got quite a bit of noise going on. So let's go into the develop tab and let's go into our noise and sharpening pane. And let's use that no noise AI option. You can see right out of the gate, it just gets rid of all of that graininess and noise behind our subject and within our subject, yet we still have all of that detail and quality of the original photograph. Now you can always enhance the detail a little bit with this enhanced detail slider. And you can add in a little bit of micro sharpening here, but keep in mind that the more detail and sharpening you add back into the scene, you could potentially add noise back as well. So too much detail and too much sharpening can also lead to bringing back noise into the scene. So just keep that in mind. I wouldn't go too intense, especially if you have quite a noisy photograph. We'll choose apply there to set that no noise edit into the photograph. And if we zoom out, we've got a nice, crispy, clear image free from all of that noise and grain. Another common editing mistake to avoid is to avoid major exposure adjustments into the entirety of a photograph, especially if specific regions need different modifications than other regions. So what I mean by that is if we take a look at this photograph here, if we hold down the J key on our keyboard, we have a little bit of a blowout in the sky. There are just some areas of highlights that are blown out. So let me just tame those a bit. I'll just pull back on my highlights there. But if we take a look at this image, it's a little bit underexposed in the regions that we want it to be bright, you know, in this sort of uh, building region of the scene and also a little bit in this foreground, it's quite dim. And so if we go into the develop tab here and we pull up on our exposure slider to brighten things up, we can easily be bringing back that blowout area within our sky there and we'll have a bunch of true white without any detail. Now we can do the same thing with other sliders to sort of try to target different tonal regions. So we could try to just target the midtones and that does a pretty good job. We could do the same thing, you know, with the midtones and shadows there, just sort of combine the two sliders just like that. But what I like about this original exposure is that nice detailed contrasted sky. We have a lot of nice color in there and we have a lot of nice mood up there. And by pulling up on our midtones and pulling up on our shadow tones, we sort of lose that. And so in instances like this, where you're, you have sort of separate regions that need different modifications, I'd recommend going into your local tab here and dodging and burning, i.e. brightening and darkening areas of your scene to build light as you want it to be. So let's use this first adjustment to just add in exposure. So I'll just rename this dodging, uh, brightening. When I, when I say dodging, I mean brightening. And when I say burning, I just mean darkening. So let's use this lighten option there. And what you can do here is a couple of different, different things. You can just use your adjustment brush and you could paint this in, went a little overboard there. You could just paint this in into the regions that you want to have a little bit more light into them. Just like that. And then we can modify those different tonal sliders, you know, midtones, shadows, things like that. And of course I could probably get a little bit better with the mask there, but just to sort of show you that you can apply this into different regions. And this is a little bit intensive of an adjustment there. But another option that you could use here is you could use, and let me reset the mask here. You could just use your adjustable gradient. 
So let's grab our adjustable gradient here. It lives right next to your adjustment brush. You can grab it with Option and K on your keyboard. And we can drop this down into the scene there. And I reset my dodging brightening adjustment there. So let's set it back to lighten. And you can see with our gradient there, we can sort of apply this just to that foreground section there. And I'll sort of pull this small handle there to rotate a little. And we'll use this perforated edge there to feather that. And then let's pull up on the midtones and those shadows there. And now if we turn off this dodging and brightening option, it's looking much better there in our foreground, you know, maybe a little bit too intense. So remember we can modify that with the opacity slider here and maybe modify the contrast a little there. But you can see by building that light where we need it to be, we can avoid blowing out and darkening the image as a whole and we can just apply light as needed. Another common editing mistake to avoid is to avoid not cropping and leveling your photograph. In images like this, especially your images where you have a lot of excess in the top, bottom, or sides, or you have a bunch of crooked lines or it's crooked, you know, it could be distracting to the viewer and it could be difficult to sort of look at. So here's a few ways that we can crop really quickly to just bring back that natural look within our scene. So C on your keyboard is going to grab your crop tool for you. It's a quick way to open up your crop tool. Now in our crop tool, we have this menu here that we can choose to modify our grid view. So if you're looking to modify the overlay, that's what I should say, not the grid, it's going to modify the overlay of the crop that you wanna see. So with, there's all of these different overlays that you can view. There's golden spiral, there's triangles. I typically just use this rule of thirds option or this grid option. So I'm gonna use this rule of thirds here. And we also have this menu to choose a preset crop. And what I think I'll do with this one is just use freeform here. That way I can just drag these corners around freely and modify the crop that way. So let's just sort of crop in on the surfer here and remove some excess. I'll drag in on those corners there and then I'll just sort of place the surfer in an interesting sort of position in my crop here. Perfect. So I've cropped, I've added the surfer into a nice interesting spot. I may drag this down a little bit there. But now the image is still quite crooked. So a couple different ways, you could use this leveling option there. You could click this level tool and then you could just drag it on to the horizon line there. And then we'll level your photo that way. Or you could hover over the corners. It will show you this little rotation handle there and you can rotate it that way. And then you can use the grid to align it with the horizon line there. So if we hit enter on the keyboard there. There we go. We're much more in the action there. The image appears much more level and it is much more natural now rather than having that crookedness and also all of that excess on the top and the sides. And my last common editing mistake to avoid is to avoid not feathering your masks. So whether you're creating a mask on a specific subject or you're masking in adjustments into specific areas of your photograph, feathering your masks can be incredibly helpful in blending those styles and those adjustments into your scene naturally. So with images like this, where we're just trying to modify maybe a specific region of the scene, for example, if I'm trying to darken this area of wheat grass here, grass here, um, I'll use my local adjustments tab here and I'll use this adjustment and I'll just say darken grass, bright grass. 
we're going to use this darken option. And to showcase the power of feathering a mask, let's just go into our masking options here and let's use a color range mask and we'll drop it on this region of grass that we need to modify. So let's view the mask here and let's just pull back so that we're just sort of targeting that one area. And let's view this and look how terrible that looks. It looks awful. If we turn this off and on, it looks really horrible because it's really just trying to target those specific colors. So what you can do in these cases is just pull up on the feathering slider. And there you go. It blends it in perfectly into the scene and you don't have all of this crunch or any of that sort of weird, awkward masking in your scene by feathering it, you can soften things up and get things going within the edit rather than having, again, that sort of crunched up look within the photo.